Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can query any GraphQL API that you want by using just the tools built into JavaScript, we're not going to be using any libraries at all, and it's incredibly easy to do. So without any further ado, let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start creating your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And now to get started on this video, you can see that as always we have Visual Studio Code open to a blank project on the left, and on the right I actually have the GraphQL Playground for the API that we're going to be using. It's at countries.trevorblades.com, I'll leave a link in the description below for you. But essentially what this GraphQL API does is if we open up the docs, you can see that we access the continents, and we can access countries as well as languages. And what our application is going to do is it's going to query the continents list and it's going to give us a select box with every single one of the continents from this list and then whenever a user selects a continent in that select box it's going to get all of the countries for that specific continent and just to give you a little bit of an example of how this works we can just do a query here and we want to query the continents so we can say continents and we want to get back the name as well as the code and if we just hit play you can see we get back all of the different continents as well as their specific unique code. And if you're not very familiar with GraphQL or how GraphQL works on the back end, I have an entire video covering GraphQL in depth in Node.js, which I'm going to link in the cards and the description down below for you to check out. Now that we understand how this API works, let's come over to Visual Studio Code, create our basic index.html, and if we just hit exclamation point and enter, it's going to generate all of the boilerplate HTML code that we need for our application. Now inside of here, what we can do is we want to create our select box, which is going to be our continent select. So we can just say continent select. And then inside of here is where we're going to put all of our options. By default, we're going to want to have a placeholder option, which is just going to be selected by default. Whoops, make sure it's just option. So we want that to be selected. And we want it to be hidden just so that the user can't actually select this inside of the select box. It'll only show as the default value. And we want this to just say select a continent. And then lastly, right below all of this, all we want to do is add in a div. And this div is just going to be for our countries list. So we can give it an ID, which is just going to say countries list. And we can close that off and we can just leave it completely empty. We're going to put the countries in there. Now, if we save this, and if we right click, we can click open with live server if you have that extension installed in Visual Studio Code. And you can see it says select a continent. And of course, there's nothing in the list. If we remove this hidden property, you can see that it'll be in the list. But if we add that, that means that the user cannot select that. So our list right now is empty, which is okay because we need JavaScript to populate this by calling the API right here. So let's include a script, which we just want to have here with a source of script. JS. This is going to be the JavaScript file we make. And we're just going to defer this so it loads after our HTML section loads. And we can create that script.js now. Now, before we jump into populating that select box that we have over here, we just want to test actually querying the GraphQL API. And in order to do that, we're going to be using fetch, which is built into the browser. And it allows us to make API requests and calls. And we just want to pass it this URL, countries.trevorblades.com. This is going to be the URL portion of our fetch. So let's just put that in there like this. And then the next thing we need to pass our fetch is going to be a bunch of options, which is going to be how we're going to customize it. So first we want to say the method, which is going to be post. This is going to be a post request because we're trying to post to this GraphQL API. Next, we need to put our headers because we're going to be getting JSON back. As you can see, this is JSON over here. So we need to make sure that we set our headers for our content type. Whoops, so we got content. If I can spell it properly, content type, just like that. And we want to set this to application slash JSON. There we go. And that's essentially telling us that what we're getting back from the API is going to be JSON information. And then lastly here, we need to put the body of our application. And this is going to be JSON, but we need to make sure we convert it to a string to be used with fetch. So we'll say JSON.stringify. And inside of here, we're going to pass an object. And this object is only going to have one property, which is query. And this is going to be this query right here. And we can't actually pass this as an object because this is a valid JavaScript. It's not an actual object. But what we can do is pass it as a string 
So if we use backtick, we can put our string onto multiple lines, and we can just put our query inside of here, just like this. And we can always just copy this query straight here from our GraphQL and paste it into our fetch. And this is going to work. This is going to query the API and give us back these JSON results. So to test that, we can just put dot then in here, and this is going to give us back a response, but this response needs to first be converted from JSON to an actual JavaScript object. So we just say dot JSON, and then we can do another dot then, let's put these on the same line, and this dot line then is going to have our actual data response. So we can just say data, and then inside of here, we have our data property here. So we can say console.log data.data, and that should be all of these continents here. Let's save that, make sure we save our HTML page, and let's actually inspect our page and see if that worked. There we go. And if we go over to our console, you can see we have an object which has our continents inside of it and the list of all of our continents. So we know that this worked. And if we remove code, for example, and we save this, and we check our continents array, you'll see that they no longer have the code. So we know we're directly calling this API and whatever we pass it, we're getting back as results. And if we wanted to go a step further, we could say here, continents, Oops, continents. And there we go, we have just the list of our continents being returned. So now what we need to do is actually add these as options to our select. So let's first get our select. We can do that by just coming up here, creating a variable, which we'll call continent, whoops, continent select. And we're gonna set that equal to document.getElementById. And if you remember, we put an ID of continent select on here. So we're just gonna get that element by that ID and now this is our actual continent selector, which we can see right here on the side. Now inside of this dot then, instead of actually logging out our continents, let's loop through each one of them. So we can say continents dot for each, and we wanna do this for each continent. There we go. And for each continent, we first wanna create an option. So we can just say const option is going to be equal to document dot create element. And we're just creating an option element. And then we need to set the properties on this. We first need to set the value, which in our case is going to be equal to the code of the continent. So we can just say here, continent.code. This is the value. So when we select that option, that'll be essentially the ID of our option. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set the inner text. So we can set that here to our continent.name. Now we need to add this option to our select so we can get our continent select. And we just wanna make sure we append this to our option here. So we put our option inside of our continent select and now if we save that, close out of this, you can see that all of our different options for our continents are inside of our select. We can select one, we can change it to a different one. It really doesn't matter. But now the next thing to do is to actually get the countries for whichever continent we select, because right now this select does nothing. And if we go back to our API here, let me just expand this out. There's another query we can do inside the docs. We can query for an individual continent, and this just takes the code. So what we wanna do is we wanna query for a continent and we pass it in a code. As you can see, we have AF for Africa. So let's just put in AF and we wanna get back the countries. So we can say here that we wanna get back countries and for each country, we just want to get their name, for example. So now let's run that. And you can see we get every single country inside of Africa. And this will be the query that we want to run when we actually do our code inside of our application for when we select one of these continents. But something that you can do in GraphQL is actually pass in variables other than hard coding it, because right now this AF is hard coded into our query, we can do what's called passing a variable. So we can create a function called get countries. And we can say that it takes a variable called code. We can call this whatever we want, it doesn't matter. And we can say that this is going to be a string. So now we know that we have a variable code, which we can use right here inside of our query. And then down here, we can pass query variables. This is just going to be a JavaScript object. So we can say we're gonna pass it a code and this code is AF. Now, if we run this, you can see we get the exact same results over here. And what this is doing is it's creating this function for us. It's saying it's gonna take a code variable, which we created down here, and it's going to pass it into the continent. So we're actually going to create this exact query inside of our JavaScript in order to run it. But before we do that, I wanna clean our code up over here just a little bit, because we know we're gonna be calling this fetch query multiple times, and the only thing that's gonna be different is our query section. So we don't want to have to copy and paste all this code. So let's just create a function to do it. We're just going to call it query fetch, and it's going to take in a query of whatever we're going to be passing. That query is going to be this section right here. So let's copy this code into the function for now. 
Let's make sure that we return our results so we can actually use these inside of our function. And what we want to do is this query, we're going to pass in here as our query property for our json.stringify. We also know that it's always going to be json, so we can copy this dot then, which converts our object to json. And now, if we remove all of this code, we can just call that function we just created, which is query fetch. And all we want to do is pass it this query right here that we just created, close it off, and then we can put our dot then back up here. And if we save and check over here, you can see our list is still loading. This will allow us to call the same function for our second query, which is this query to get all of our different countries, and we won't have to copy all this code every single time. So now that we have that helper function created for us, we can actually set up a selector for our change event. So we can say continent select dot add event listener, and we want to listen for change. Essentially, this will be called every single time that we change our selector inside of here. Whenever we select a continent, this function is going to be called, and it's going to take an event argument for what is actually being called. And we can get the value that is selected by just calling here e.target.value. This is going to be the value of whatever we select inside of here. So let's set that equal to, whoops, our constant is going to be called country, or I'm sorry, continent code. And we're just going to set that equal to this value. This is essentially the code that we set here on our option.value. So if we select Africa, as we know, this is going to be AF as the code inside this value. Now with that out of the way, let's create another variable, which is going to be for our countries. And we're actually going to create a new function to get these countries. And this function here is just going to be called the get continent countries. And it's going to take in our country, our continent code, just like that. And this is where we're going to call our query to get our fetch. So we can just come in here, say query fetch. And we know that we need to pass it in the query that we used over here. So let's expand this out so we can see this. Copy this entire query inside of our fetch here and make sure it's indented properly. And as you can see, we're now getting all of our countries, but we need to pass it this variable of code. And the way that this works is we can just pass in another property to our body, which is called variables. And we can just create a variable here to hold those. And we can actually pass that in to our query fetch. Whoops just like this. So now we can actually pass in a second property of variables to our query fetch. So let's just do that now. We know that it's just going to be an object and we know that the first thing is going to be our code. So we can say that we have a code and what we want to do with our code is we actually want to pass in whatever code is selected, which in our case is continent code, just like that. And now this query fetch is going to be making this exact query over here. We can even test this by just saying dot then. And what we want to do, this is going to be our data. And inside of here, we can just do a simple console.log of our data. And now let's just call this over here. And we're going to pass in our continent code, just like that. And since this is going to be a asynchronous function, because we have dot then going on, what we're going to do is we're going to make this an asynchronous function, and we're just going to await the results of this. And right now, this actually isn't returning to us the countries, but it is going to be logging out this information. We just want to make sure we return this for now. And if we save that, come over here, make sure we inspect our page, go to the console, and as soon as we click on one of these, for example, Africa, we're gonna be getting a list here with our continent, and inside of that continent, we have all of our different countries. So we know that we wanna get our data, dot data, dot continent, dot countries. And this is going to be our actual countries. So let's just return this from our dot then here. And now what we can do is say console.log of our countries, and if we save that, select Africa, we just have an array here with all of our different countries by name. The next thing that we need to do is we can just close out of this and we wanna actually populate our list down here with all these different countries. We don't wanna just log them. So the first thing we need to do is get a variable, which we're just gonna call our country list. And of course, we can just get an element by ID. And if we remember, we passed it this countries list ID. So let's copy that into here, just like that. Make sure the T's on the end. And now we can use this country list inside this function. The first thing I want to do is just set the inner HTML to an empty string. Essentially, if we have countries in the list, I want to completely remove them so we can add the new countries to the list. Now we can loop over all of our countries. So just say for each country. And what we want to do for each one of these countries is create a new div for them. So we can come in here and create an element. Whoops, element, which is going to be equal to document dot create element 
and we just want to create a simple div. And then for that element, we want to set the inner text and we want to set that equal, whoops, equal to our country dot name. And then we want to add this to our country list. So we can say country list dot append of our element. And now if we select Africa, you can see we get all of the different countries in Africa. We can select Antarctica, we get all the countries in Antarctica and so on. And this is going to work for all of our different countries. And that's all it takes to consume a GraphQL API. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.